Hello, I am being frank with you. It is Saturday morning and it's a little bit raining. It has been raining overnight, it's heavier overnight, but now it's a slight rain and I'm hopeful that it will be off by about lunchtime. Um, you see in the background I'm burning all the paperwork that we uh, don't want just to throw in the rubbish. Keep it confidential. <coughs> Keep it burnt and then it's very confidential. Uh, I think there are some other things I need to do about the garden today. And of course at lunchtime I have a gardener coming along just to have a look and see what he can do to help us. So that would be good. I thought today I could talk about the solar panels and the whole uh, business of generating your own electricity. And then I can tell you about the meeting I had with uh, this uh, Irishman from um, an energy company, who, uh, an energy company based in Ireland, and uh, he is uh, trying to develop distributed storage, and I'll explain what that means, because it was news to me too. But first of all, the solar panels. As you can see, we have two ground-based arrays. The one on the left of the picture is 6 kilowatts, and the one on the right is 4 kilowatts. The one on the right, the 4 kilowatt array, is um, 16 panels. I had to count them, sorry. Uh, 16 panels, and we had them installed, and then a year later we had the 40 panels for the 6 kilowatt array. That's not right, it's not 40. It's, uh, in total it is 40 panels. Um, i show you the inverters, because we, we think we got the top of the range inverters. I don't know, maybe somebody could comment and tell me that that is right or wrong. Let me show you. The inverters are from a company called ABB. Uh, most of the time, like right now, they are quite quiet. But when they're operating at full power, they make a buzzing sound. Which is why it is a huge uh, benefit having the panels outside and not on the roof of the house. I say outside, I mean not on the house. Because if you have the inverter in your house, maybe in the attic space, you can become aware of this buzzing, buzzing noise all the time. Now I'll try and zoom in and show you the, uh, the display on there and maybe explain some of the, the detail that it shows. I don't know exactly what all these different things mean, but first of all it tells you that the inverter is okay, the type of output it has, serial number, Sorry, it's a bit shaky, but I'm on my hands and knees in the cold. It then gives you a chance to program in the cost of the electricity that you generate. I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, the total wattage output per second. Again, something to do with costs. The temperature um, inside the inverter. The peak that it has had, 6.1 kilowatt hours, and the peak for today, 292. Not very much, but it's a dull and rainy day. Uh, the connection with the grid. I don't know if that's our internal grid, or if it means the grid, the, the national grid. Haven't a clue what that means. Nor that. As you can see, there are lots of information if you actually knew what it meant. And of course it says Saturday 18th of February, and the time is all wrong because it's out by an hour. And in the rain it has two other enormous benefits. One is like a big umbrella because I'm sheltered from the rain, and the other is my wood is stored underneath the panels. And that's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, helps to uh, season it, keep it dry, and uh, it means we have storage for wood. Otherwise it would probably just lie in the garden or block up the entire garage. There's quite a lot of wood there. Um, probably about three tons of wood. But it's amazing how quickly with um, an open fire and a wood burning stove, how quickly you can go through that amount of wood. Anyway, I did not want to talk about wood, I wanted to talk about the, the panels. The cables run from the panels around the side of our house and eventually through the wall and come into our utility room where they go into isolator switches here. Uh, there are two separate boxes, one for each array. Uh, they have to be metered separately because we got them at different times and because of that we are on different tariffs. Now I think I'll, I'll go into the costs and the, the feed-in tariff later on. Up at the top you can see the meter and it shows 
how many units we have uh, generated since we got the panels originally. Uh, this is the old array, I think. Hold on. Correction. This is the newer array. It has created 8,450 kilowatt hours. In other words, we have produced 8.5 megawatts of electricity uh, since we got those panels installed. The other one has produced about 7,700 kilowatt hours. So it's been good to us. It is Saturday evening and I have a chicken cooking in the oven. So, while it cooks, let me continue my story about uh, photovoltaic panels. The big question you will probably want to hear is um, how much did it cost to install 10 kilowatts of solar panels? And over the two installations, which was done by the same company, it cost me a total of £20,000. Now, I'm not going to mention the name of the company because they were so bad. The, the installation process was so badly organized and just so badly um, carried out that uh, I would not want to, to mention their name, certainly not as a recommendation. £20,000 for 10 kilowatt uh, panels, so that's £2,000 per kilowatt, which is probably still the same as you would buy them today. We chose Axitec panels. Now, they are nice, you have seen the photographs, uh, they are all black. Many panels you get have this kind of chrome silver edging around them and um, it does not look very good. But that was not the main reason for buying Axitec. We looked at some research from a German scientific company and they had graded like a hundred different types of panels and Axitec were in third place. In second place, I don't remember the name of the company, but they produced a very good panel which um, would actually give you a few more watts from each panel per hour, but um, the the company, the research company reckoned that the, the life of the panels would not be as good as Axitec. So they managed to gain points for production, but not for a long life, and we discounted them. The panel which they had in first place was superb, absolutely excellent. Uh, it produced more watts per hour, and it had a good um, uh, um, degradation record. Um, but it was so expensive, it was about 50% more expensive than Axitec, so we decided no, we could not go that extra cost. So we settled for Axitec, and I'm happy we did, because they have been good panels over the, uh, the few years that we've had them. Um, so, what do I get back for my £20,000 investment? First of all, we get the feed-in tariff. Now, when I took out the uh, two tariffs, it works out at about 14 pence, 15 pence per kilowatt hour. And what this means in, in hard cash terms is that if a year I get £1,600 paid over uh, four installments by the, uh, the power company. And that's the, the thing that is easy to calculate. So then you say £1,600 times um, a life of maybe 25 years, that is £40,000. So a £20,000 investment, and I know I'm going to get back about £40,000 in total. I'm happy with that. Beyond that, there are, there are the, um, the, the unknowable parts, because you don't really know how much electricity you're using that comes from the photovoltaics and is therefore free. The one little help I have here is, uh, you may have seen a couple of vlogs ago, I, I did a little bit about the iBoost system which we have in uh, next to our hot water tank. And what this does is it takes extra electricity that we are not using in the house and rather than let it go to the grid, it comes into the hot water tank. Now, last week, for example, it did only 2 kilowatt hours and that's not very much. But it is a saving because normally we would heat our hot water using oil and oil is quite an expensive way to heat the hot water. So I know I'm getting a saving there. Now that's two kilowatt hours at this time of year and in January, February you don't get a lot of sunshine in Scotland. But I know in summer we can have maybe 60 or 70 kilowatt hours going into that hot water tank. So let's just say on average two at this time of year, 60 in summer. That's an average of 30 kilowatt hours per week times 50 weeks. Let's call it 1500 kilowatt hours at um, 15 pence per kilowatt. That's an extra 225 pounds in a year. 
multiply that by 25 years, that's a lot of money. Um, and as I say, there are the unknowable uh, benefits because we don't know how much in real terms we take from the photovoltaics that, um, that we would otherwise be taking from the grid. So I'm quite happy with the way it's all costing out. Is there a downside? The one negative that I can think of is what happens if I sell the house? Well, in order to get the feed-in tariff, you have to give meter readings, and I'm sure anybody buying my house would not want me coming back every three months to take a meter reading. So you have to just say, if you sell the house, then you lose your investment. Will I get the money back when I sell the house? You know, is it going to be worth more? It's one of these things a bit like um, you build a, a glass house, not a glass house, but an extension at the back of your house. Do you get the money back for that when you sell the house? Probably not. And the other question is, if I did not have photovoltaic panels right now, and I was approached by a company and they said, we will fit a 10 kilowatt array for £20,000, would I do it now? Hmm. The current feed-in tariff has been chopped and chopped by different governments. The last conservative government took 80% of the value away. So now the feed-in tariff is worth 4 pence per kilowatt hour. So I think my answer has to be no. I would not do it now. If I wanted to do some form of renewable energy now, I think biomass is probably the way forward. And there are some very good, I must say, German systems um, which are very good at producing not just um, heat for your house or heat for your hot water. The good systems now can produce electricity as well. They are expensive, but within five years, the government is willing to give you grants and you can get all of your money back. So supposing you spend £20,000 on a, bio system, a biomass system now, you would have that paid back in five years, not the approximate 12 to 13 years it would take for even the existing PV system I have. So, no, I would not do PV now. I think that's all I have to say about photovoltaics. I hope you found this useful. If you have any comments or any questions about the system, please feel free, put it in the comments down below, and I'm happy to, to answer you. I'm going to wrap up for today because I've got to go and finish my chicken cooking. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.